If the latest reports from the war-torn nation are to be believed, Afghanistan is set to get a new government led by Taliban chief Hebatullah Akhundzada. There will be an Afghan prime minister as well as president, but they will work under the Taliban chief. Many are drawing parallels between what the Taliban may want in Afghanistan and what's the system in Iran. In Tehran, the concept of a supreme leader has been in place since the Islamic Revolution of the 1970s-80s. In line with this, the Taliban may also see Akhundzada as the supreme leader of Afghanistan. So what's stopping the Taliban from announcing the new government? Well, the problem lies in the structure of the Taliban. Many believe that the group is of monolithic nature. But that's not true. There are various factions that form the core of the group. So each has a say in what will be the future of Afghanistan. There are local reports that the presidential palace in Kabul is being readied for the upcoming ceremony. While the streets of the Afghan capital almost have zero female presence, people are still trying to leave the country. There has been a steady outflow towards the Pakistan borders. People are also traveling on foot towards Turkey via Iran. After a show of strength in Kandahar, the Taliban fighters are busy in the clashes in Panjshir Valley. A report from an Afghan news agency Pajwak said that two resistance commanders were killed in a new round of firing today. Stay with us as we bring you the latest from Afghanistan and other related news to Kabul evacuations. Tajikistan cannot afford to take in large numbers of refugees and asylum seekers from neighboring Afghanistan as it promised to do in this summer, the police chief of Central Asia's poorest country said on Thursday. The government of Tajikistan, an ex Soviet state allied to Moscow and part of the Russian led CSTO military alliance, said in July that it could take in 100,000 refugees from Afghanistan, but that it needed to create infrastructure for them. Tajikistan does not have the capacity to accommodate a large number of refugees and asylum seekers, Interior Minister Ramazan Rakamzoda said in comments circulated by his ministry on Thursday. He said the government had allocated areas totaling 70 hectares along its Afghan border to receive refugees and has appealed to the international community for assistance. UK Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab will meet the Emir of Qatar and the Qatari Foreign Minister in Doha on Thursday to discuss the situation in Afghanistan and secure safe passage for British nationals and Afghan supporters from the conflict-torn country, the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO, said. The FCDO said the cabinet minister's decision to visit Doha first on a trip to the region reflects the high-profile role the Qataris have played with regard to Afghanistan in recent years, including hosting the Taliban political office in Doha since 2013. The prospect of getting Kabul airport up and running and safe passage for foreign nationals and Afghans across land borders is said to be on top of the agenda for his visit to Qatar. The Gulf state has already begun discussions about how best to ensure security at Kabul airport. Even in the final days of Washington's chaotic airlift in Afghanistan, Javed Habibi was getting phone calls from the U.S. government promising that the green card holder from Richmond, Virginia, his wife and their four daughters would not be left behind. He was told to stay home and not worry that they would be evacuated. Late Monday, however, his heart sank as he heard that the final U.S. flights had left Kabul's airport, followed by the blistering staccato sound of Taliban gunfire, celebrating what they saw as their victory over America. They lied to us, Habibi said of the U.S. government. He is among hundreds of American citizens and green card holders stranded in the Afghan capital. Victoria Nuland, Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs, would not address individual cases, but said all U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents who could not get evacuation flights or were otherwise stranded had been contacted individually in the past 24 hours and told to expect further information about routes out once those have been arranged. Veteran Bollywood actor Nasiruddin Shah has condemned sections of Indian Muslims celebrating the Taliban's return to power in Afghanistan, calling it rather dangerous. Even as the Taliban's return to power in Afghanistan is a cause for concern for the whole world, celebrations of the barbarians by some sections of Indian Muslims is no less dangerous, Nasiruddin Shah said in a video shared on social media.